You're not telling me anything. Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. How's everybody doing? Good? Yeah, recording red? Red dot in the corner? Okay, alhamdulillah, good stuff. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we are continuing um, with the third hadith of Imam al nawawi in which Allah, uh, excuse me, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَى خَمْسِ That uh, Islam is built upon five. And so we went through uh, the shahada, we talked about as-salah in, in, in detail, and now inshallah ta'ala, we're going to talk about وَإِيْتَا الزَّكَاهِ Ita'an means to give and a zakah. Zakah is an interesting term. It means it comes from the root verb zakah yezku zakat zakaan, which means two things. It means to grow and it also means to remove or to purify something. And the idea is it sounds like a contrast. It sounds like it's opposites, right? Are you is it adding and growing or is it removing and becoming less? Is it more or less? Which one is it? And the idea is uh, even even zeka yesku and also tezkia zeka yuzeki tezkia ten it implies to grow in terms of good like in terms of blessings and in terms of good things and it means to purify as in remove the negative so it's quite a comprehensive term and it implies it has a, a, a whole a holistic sort of meaning if you will that's the linguistic meaning however zeka with a tamarbuta uh, zeka implies what. Istilahan uh, or uh, uh, contextually or you could say technically from an Islamic perspective is uh, giving 2.5% of your annual, annual excess income or 140th, 2.5% is also 140th of your access, uh, excess, excuse me, excess uh, 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 um, wealth. And, uh, and so yes, uh, this is something that the Muslim is supposed to do every single year. What, now the question is, why is it that this uh, uh, this uh, uh, practice of zakah is called zakah. Like, why would it be given that name? Like, why can't it just be called the giving of money or something like that, right? Uh, uh, why is it specifically called this purification, if you will, or this growth? And the idea is because when you, it, there's, there's, there's multiple implications. One is that you are growing spiritually. You are stepping on your materialism and you're allowing your heart to soar and to increase in good and, and blessings because you are putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before your own shahawat, before your own desires. So in, in terms of blessings, you grow. Also, the more charity you give, Allah ta'ala is going to put blessings in your money. So your wealth is actually going to increase, inshallah ta'ala. Your wealth is going to, you know, uh, as we know, uh, uh, charity does not decrease wealth. Why is that the case? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of accountants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who controls all wealth. And so when Allah ta'ala sees that the, the believer is giving, Allah ta'ala will keep on allowing that believer to keep on receiving. So that's one, that's from the growth perspective. In terms of the purification, you're removing that materialism, you're removing that worldliness, that obsession with dunya, you're removing it from your heart. So that's the implication behind zakah. In fact, the Prophet mentions, Man adda zakata malihi faqad dhahaba anhu sharruhu. Whoever pays zakah on his wealth will have its evil removed from it, or its evil removed from him. In other words, whatever evil you may have acquired while you were earning. So let's say you're working a job and a certain percentage, I don't know, let's say you clocked in. Uh, a little bit too early and you didn't, weren't really working. Or let's say you were slacking off and so you're taking money that you didn't really earn or you didn't do the job very well. Uh, uh, I don't know, whatever the case may be. There's certain uh, lapses in judgment. There's certain slip-ups, etc. There's certain sin involved in what you're doing. Whatever percentage of evil is involved in that uh, wealth, by giving zakah, you are throwing away whatever the evil portion is. And so subhanAllah, you are purifying your wealth in that sense. So, hence tezkiyah, hence purification. Uh, it's also interesting that this concept of tezkiya is a much bigger concept. Uh, usually tezkiya is translated as purification of the soul, or again, growth of the soul, spiritual increase. And uh, it's interesting that there's three words that are usually described with it, and they all have the same, uh, if you will, pattern when it's written. They are takhliya, tahliya, and tajliya. And if you realize that those th the only thing that's changing is the letters Kha, Ha, and Jim, and all of them are written the same except one has a dot on top, one has no dots, and the other one has a dot on the bottom. So just, and what do these three words mean? Takhliya is to vacate or to empty yourself 
as in to empty yourself of spiritual impurities. Uh, uh, try to get rid of jealousy and rancor and hatred and uh, uh, various desires and so on and so forth. So they say that if you really want to purify, or if you want, if you want to spiritually grow, you need to do first number one, tahliya, empty out all the bad qualities. Number two, tahliya. Tahliya means adornment, as in adorn and beautify the soul with a beautiful ibadat and characteristics and qualities, try to increase in good deeds. So it's kind of the whole idea of remove first and then add second. Same thing with la ilaha illallah. First you remove uh, false beliefs of any sort of deity and then you affirm belief in Allah Ta'ala. You know, you, you, you can't uh, eat junk food and then say, oh, I'm going to add to my diet just a little bit of healthy food. If you still maintain the junk food, it's not going to help much. The idea is you need to remove the, the, the harm and then inshallah Ta'ala start adding the good. And the third one is tajliya. Tajliya means clarification, or you could say, in this case, spiritual awakening or enlightenment. So anyway, this is, these are some terms that are used to imply how, what steps are necessary to uh, uh, achieve a, a, a greater spiritual state. Now, of course, there's another term that is used for charity. So other than zakah, what is it? Sadaqah, exactly. Sadaqah implies what? That you give in charity. Uh, 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 now, where does the word sadaqa come from? Sadaqa comes from the word sidq, which means truth. And that's really, really, it's just, that in of itself is a, has a powerful message built within it. The idea is what? That every time you're giving sadaqa, you are proving sidq, you, are, you're, you are, are, are demonstrating the truth of your claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above everything else. Because money could be spent on anything, right? Any material thing you could use, you could save up your money and uh, use that money for that, for that thing. The moment you take that money and you spend it fi sabilillah and you've gotten rid of it, you're showing that, Ya Allah, you come first. And that is the sidq, that is the truth behind it. In English, in simple English terms, put your money where your mouth is. Right? Everybody, everybody knows this, this concept, right? You say something, okay, bet on it. You know, put your, if you really believe it, then bet on it, right? Put your money where your mouth is. So we understand this concept that people don't play around with money. When it comes to money, people, you know, people are more serious. And uh, we know that the Prophet ﷺ said, As-sadaqatu burhan, that sadaqah is an evidence. So even the word sadaqah, meaning sidq, implies that it's an evidence, that it's, it's proving the truth of your claim that you have faith. I mean, anybody can talk a good talk, but then when it's time to write the check, and I, to be perfectly honest, I've had a good amount of experience in this when it comes to anything that involves the youth. <laughs> because the parents will always say what? Oh, the youth, the youth, how can we guide the youth? How can we help the youth? And oh my God, it's so important. And oh, we would do anything if we could only, you know, help the youth. And then, you know, okay, well, I have actually been giving halaqas regularly and I have been garnering some interest from the youth to study Islam. And alhamdulillah, a few of them actually want to study Islam, but they need to be sponsored to do so. They don't have the wealth to do it. Do you think you guys can, uh, you know, uh, sponsor them? Oh, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Never hear from them again. I'm not talking about this community, by the way. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm pointing any fingers at anybody in this community. I'm new in this community. So uh, I'm not pointing any negative, I'm not trying to throw any negative vibes. And I'm not going to mention where, when, who, how. I'm just saying these things happen, okay? These things definitely happen. People talk a big talk about how we're so concerned. And the moment is the time to write the check. Uh, where do they go? So suddenly they lost your phone number, they can't call you, you can't call them, they can't return text messages, and so on and so forth. So, subhanAllah, uh, you can understand why, uh, put your money where your mouth is, as sadaqah burhan. Khair inshallah. The word as salah and as zakah, since we just did salah last time, and now we're doing as zakah, it's interesting to note, do you know how many times these two concepts come together in the Quran? Just guess, throw out a number. Let's say when Allah says things like uh, they pray, they establish prayer and they give in charity. Just throw out a number. How many times do you think these two concepts are right next to each other in the Quran? Forty. So, <laughs> mashallah, eighty-two. So pretty close, mashallah. He, he's the winner. He's the winner today. So yeah, it's actually eighty-two times in the Quran Allah Taala combines salah and zakah. And now the question is why? What is what is so significant about these two deeds? And wallahu ta'ala alam, Allah knows best, but it seems to me that you can look at the world, you can look at yourself in relation to this existence from two perspectives. Your, and, and I like to think of it in terms of vertical and horizontal. Two, there's, two, there's two ways to look at the world, the vertical and the horizontal. Vertical is your spiritual connection with Allah ta'ala. Horizontal is your uh, social connection with humanity. Okay? So... Naturally, you want to be a good, righteous believer. 
What does it take to be a good righteous believer? Well, you should focus on two main relationships, the vertical one and the horizontal one. You should be the type of person that has a relationship with your Lord, you make dua regularly, you read the Quran, you study your deen, you practice, you pray your salawat. And that's represented by salah because it's five times a day. It's something so consistent uh, that it really establishes your connection with your Lord. In fact, a uh, strong opinion is that the word salah comes from the word salah. And salah means a connection. So it's your, it's your divine link, if you will. It's literally your divine link that you're linking up five times a day and connecting and worshiping your Lord. So that's your vertical connection. Now in terms of your horizontal social connection, what is that representing? Your connection with humanity, how much you care about your fellow human being, how much you care to make some sort of positive impact in the world. You, we don't believe in Islam being like a, a rahbaniya, like a, what's it called, a monasticism, just going off into a mountain and like shutting yourself off from humanity and, uh, and ignoring everybody and saying, I just worship. We don't believe that. We believe that if you truly want to be spiritual, then you have to, yes, you, there's moments and times where you cut yourself off. I'tikaf, for example, or qiyamul layl, for example. You, you just simply are alone with your Lord. But then during the daytime, you're a human being. You have to interact. You have to be part of uh, mankind and, and actually try to have a positive impact. And that's best represented, wallahu alam, it seems to be best represented by zakah. Because zakah is about taking the thing that you, you your prized possession, your money, and saying, ya Allah, uh, it's not above your command. I give it, uh, and, and it's also not, uh, overly burdensome. If you're not above the nisab level, you don't have to give. And if you are above the nisab level, nisab level, then you only have to give, like I said, one fortieth of your excess wealth. You don't have to do zakat on your car or your phone or your house or any of these things. No, it's just whatever's in the bank, whatever is uh, uh, savings. So uh, it's a very Allah Taala is very uh, merciful with us, and Subhanallah, Allah is the best of accountants, and uh, uh, Subhanallah, uh, we know that uh, if the whole world were to pay zakat, then poverty would be eradicated if every single person took it upon themselves. It's not like communism where everybody's exactly equal because that's not fair. Some people work harder than others. Some people are more talented than others. So the, this idea of communism is saying, taking the person who are talented and saying, I'm gonna take all your wealth and make you equal to the person who's done nothing, that's just not fair. But at the same time, you know, if you, if you, if you allow pure capitalism, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and eventually uh, monopolization starts to take place and eventually uh, uh, society becomes destabilized. So uh, you have to have a balance in between. And wallahu ta'ala alam, it seems that zakah is the most uh, beautiful way of doing so. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says what? Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu says that Allah says in a hadith Qudsi, Anfiq ya ibn Adam, Anfiq ya ibn Adam, unfiq alayk. That, O oh son of Adam, spend and I'll spend on you. So we as believers should have the attitude of what? That I know that every time, let's say I'm having problems, I'm having issues, that as long as I keep being generous and spending what I can, what is reasonable within my uh, limits, within my limitations, then inshallah, Allah will keep giving to me. So this is the attitude that we, the believer should have. What is the importance of zakah? Allah Ta'ala says what? وَإِن تَابُوا If they, uh, speaking about the mushrikeen, the polytheists who were fighting the Prophet ﷺ, وَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينَ That if they, the polytheists, if they repent, and if they establish prayer, and if they give zakat, then they are your brothers in this religion. In other words, Allah Ta'ala included the prayer and the zakat. So it goes to show that this is like part of the establishment of Islam. What do we learn? What is, a, what is a primary lesson that we learn from this concept of zakah? It is another f famous quote in, in, the, in English and in, in popular uh, movies and vernacular and so forth. With great power comes great responsibility. I'm sure you guys have all heard this, right? It's a very common quote. With great power comes great responsibility. That's really kind of, you could say, a, a major theme of the concept of zakah. Why? The more money you have, the more responsible you are to give, because the percentage obviously increase, or the, the percentage stays the same, the amount increases. Uh, 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 and same thing with uh, the less you have, then obviously you feel and you are less responsible in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is beautifully summarized when Allah ta'ala says what? الَّذِينَ إِن مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَلِلَّهِ عَاقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ That Allah says, and those who, speaking about the believers, those who, if we give them authority in the land, as in, with, more, with great power comes great responsibility. The more authority we give you in the land, the believer is the one who, when he has that authority in the land, he establishes prayer, he gives zakah, and what? Uh, he enjoins good uh, he, he, he enjoins, uh, good and forbids evil. He commands to good and he forbids evil, and to Allah belongs the outcome of all matters. So yes, a very important lesson that we should remember is what? That if you feel that you don't have as much as you deserve, you feel like your status or your position, 
should be higher. You should have more power. You know, some people, they feel like, you know, people don't recognize me for how great I am. I should be, you know, the king of the world. I should be the, the, you know, I should be in such a great position in society or in this company or whatever the case is, right? People always feel like, oftentimes feel like I'm not being given the recognition that I deserve. So maybe, perhaps, you can say to yourself, maybe you have to consider the possibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what you do with the little power that you have and sees that what you do with whatever power you have is simply not enough. Allah Ta'ala gave you this much and you're not fulfilling it. So why would he give you more? If he gives you more, it could be a fitna for you. It could be a source of trial and tribulations. Simple example would be if you go on, um, I think there's some videos on YouTube about people who uh, won the lottery and it like ruined their lives, you know? Because obviously if you're, if you're an irresponsible person, right? And you have uh, 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 very little, if you have very little power, you have very little money and influence and so forth, then actually your limitations are saving you. Because the moment you're given unlimited money and unlimited power, what happens? All of your demons start to become like, you know, gasoline on the fire. All, every, all your bad habits and all your bad inclinations, everybody just dumped a bunch of gasoline on that, that little fire that was burning, and boom, poof, it just goes up in, in, in flames. And so, you know, people who little, would party a little bit, but they didn't have much money, so their partying was limited. Now, no limits on partying. So uh, they, you know, they fall into all sorts of bad habits like drugs and, and they get into all sorts of debt and they make all sorts of foolish pur uh, purchases and so on and so forth. They, it could ruin their lives. So Allah Ta'ala obviously knows who you are. And so perhaps the best thing that you can do for yourself is say, Ya Allah, if I'm being limited because I'm not being responsible, then I'm going to give more. And I'm going to try to, whatever I have, whatever little limited time I have, whatever ability I have, whatever uh, talents I have, whatever wealth I have, Ya Allah, I'm going to try to give it in your sake. And I'm going to ask you that you continuously increase me in good so I can keep producing more and more good. And so, so this is the attitude that the believer should have. And this is, like I'm saying, uh, reflected in wealth as well. What are the consequences of refusing to pay zakah? What are the consequences of refusing to pay zakah? Well, in this dunya, uh, uh, the Prophet says what? Yes, this is uh, authentic hadith in Ibn Majah. وَلَمْ يَمْنَعُوا زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا مُنِعُوا الْقَطْرِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَلَوْ لَا الْبَهَائِمُ لَمْ يُمْطَرُوا That the Prophet says what? They, uh, they do not withhold zakah of their wealth, except that rain will be withheld from the sky. And were it not for the animals, no rain would come whatsoever. In other words, you remove barakah from the land. Hence, the word zakah yezku means when increase, increase in barakah. Why? Because the more we're giving in charity to one another, the more Allah Ta'ala puts barakah in the, in the land, in the, in, the, in the produce, in the harvest, in the, in the rain. In, the, in everything. SubhanAllah, Allah simply sends more blessings to humanity. And so the more and more you withhold and you're stingy, Allah Ta'ala simply removes the blessings, stops the rain to the point that almost nothing would come except for a little bit just because animals are still in need of survival. SubhanAllah. It's a very powerful hadith. That's in terms of dunya. What are the consequences of refusing to pay zakah in the next life? Allah Ta'ala tells us, وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ يَبْخَلُونَ that and let not those who greedily withhold what Allah has given to them of his bounty to ever think that it is better for them rather it is worse for them being stingy and holding on to your wealth when you know you're supposed to give in zakah, this is, you think it's good for you? Oh no, I'm just saving. This is worse for you. Their necks will be encircled by what they held on to on the day of resurrection. Things, it'll, be, it'll be like hanging on them. It'll be a weight around their necks on judgment day. And to Allah belongs the inheritance of the heavens and the earth. And Allah is with what you do fully acquainted and fully aware of what you do. SubhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala also says, Ya O uh, oh, you who have believed, there are some amongst the scholars and monks who devour wealth of the people unjustly from the way of Allah and those uh, who hoard gold and silver and spend it not in, in the way of Allah, give them the tidings of a painful punishment. Then Allah says, what? SubhanAllah, scary, scary ayah. Allah says what? The day when it will be heated, as in this, all this, gold and silver that they were hoarding, the day that it will be heated up and melted 
to, uh, 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 you know, like when you brand, when you, when you brand an animal, you know, you make it glowing hot. The way, the day that it will be heated up to the point, uh, uh, and they, it will be seared where? On their foreheads, on their sides, and on their backs. And when, uh, and it'll be said to them, this is what you hoarded for yourselves, so, so taste what you used to hoard. So subhanAllah, when people who claim to be practicing and righteous and so forth, when they're hoarding up their wealth and they refuse to give, on Yom Al-Qiyamah, all that wealth will be heated up, it'll be branded on their foreheads, on their sides, and on their backs. And I went into tafsir uh, to check what, what, why, what's the significance of these positions. Wallah ta'ala a'lam, uh, I'm sure there are many different commentaries, but one that you know, I thought was, was interesting was from uh, Al-Alusi, rahimahullah. He says, why, what does their heads represent? It represents their pomp and their arrogance. You know, you gotta, you, you know when people say when a person that acts arrogant, you got a big head, you know, and you put your head above everybody else, you think you're, you think you're above everybody. So the heads, it's because of their pride and their arrogance. Uh, they got basically a big head. The sides represent what? It represents the excess fat and, and weight that they were, why? Because they were hoarding and they were just put, they were just consuming. What are you eating so much for? Give it fi sabilillah. You're, you don't need that much. In fact, it's, it's visibly, uh, you can see the negative effects of so much consumption. Subhanallah. So these are the sides. They represent, you know, love handles, if you will. And then finally, uh, 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 they say the backs. What does the backs represent? It represents uh, each time you showed indifference and turned your back upon the poor. Every time you turn your backs upon the poor, you're going to get burned for that purpose, subhanAllah. So, in summary, those who are hoarding, they're hoarding why? Because it is a source of their arrogance, it is a source of their unhealthiness, and it is a source of their indifference. All three are represented. Arrogance, being overweight, and also being indifferent. So, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us from these uh, 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 bad qualities. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who we give and we don't over-consume, whether it be literally or uh, figuratively. Wallahu ta'ala, Adam knows best. And obviously, be concerned. Be concerned. There's people that are starving. You know, and subhanAllah, in the United States, people are literally eating themselves to death. This is a well-known fact that one of the greatest causes of death is overeating. And I mean, you just think about that. There's parts of the world where people are diving, d dying because they don't have food, and other people are eating themselves to death. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. It's truly remarkable. SubhanAllah. So may Allah protect them. And by the way, these, this, is, this is also, I don't have that hadith on me right now, but uh, these, this is mentioned in various hadith about signs of judgment day. Uh, that uh, near the end times people will suffer from uh, obesity and so forth. So, um, there are different hadith that mention that Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, I'm not going to go through the entire narration, it's in Bukhari, uh, uh, however, and it mentions that there will be people who you will find them with the animals. Uh, so the animals that they used to hoard and not give zakat on the animals, like these different various farmers, they will be trampled by those animals on judgment day. They will be trampled by them. And some people will show up with these animals hanging around their necks. And they will be saying, uh, oh, Muhammad, like, intercede for me. They'll be calling to the Prophet ﷺ. And I will say, I can't help you, for I conveyed Allah's message to you. In other words, the Prophet ﷺ will repeatedly say, I can't help you. Even though they're calling and saying, help me, help me. You know, I'm, I'm, I have all this, you know, weighing me down and, and, and burdening me. It's like, well, I told you what to do. I told you, don't just keep consuming. Give the appropriate amount. Allah Ta'ala has made certain rights that you have to give, but they just didn't listen. Do you think you could uh, off and on one time? Just like, okay. So we'll continue in part two, inshallah.